everybody, it's Super J, and it is time for Super J's True Confessions from the Desert live with Super J, the Millennial Jonathan, the iGen Centennial Yakira, and we have a special guest here today, my soror, my stash, from originally from The Ohio State University. She's currently from Austin, Texas. This is my spesh Annette, and she's here with us. So today's confession. Let me find my tablet, because we got some stuff to do today. Um, we're going to be talking about controversy. All right, hold on one second. Oh, you got it? So, Annette is camera shy. You're going to have to slide over a little bit, so we can all squeeze in. Annette is a little camera shy. So, with that in mind, I decided to help her out a little bit and host by preparing <laughs> some apple teenies. So, if it starts to get a little silly and a little funny, she's like on her second and a half drink. <laughs> because these are like two, that's like two servings, right? So, yeah, she's on her third and a half, I guess. <laughs> two and a half. So, yeah. So, for all of those of you who have um, wanted to really get an idea of what it's like to see Super J under any influence whatsoever, I'm not a drinker, so. Mine is virgin. Mine is like, like, yeah, they're virgin. They're virgin. <laughs> All right, speaking of virgin, virgins. So if that's the case, can I have some? <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's how we know. Um, speaking of virgins, a lot has happened this week, guys. Virgins and or virgins? Virgins. virgins. Like and virgin so, drink. virgins. Like virgin drink. Okay. okay. Virgin Sorry, individual. Me. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Yakira's being special. Because there has been so much drama this week, I mean, from the last show, which was really, really interactive about sex, and we hope all of you guys are going to be interactive today, up through literally probably yesterday, um, so many things have happened. Oh, no, it's actually today. Um, the Colin Kaepernick video that's on my page that is getting so much attention right now uh, is causing controversy. My comment uh, about the LGBTQIA is getting con is controversial right now. Uh, some people s suggest or believe that I am a bigot and that my posts promote my subtle bigotry. Uh, so <laughs> like anybody who knows me, okay, so we're going to talk about that. What else do we have to talk about? Um, Yakira's presence on the sex streams. We've had three communication and conversations about sex. Let's talk about sex. Um, is it necessary or is it taboo? The second one was sex, sex, and more sex. And then well, I thought it was sex talk. Uh, some more sex talk. Some more sex talk. Sex, sex, and more sex. Last week was sex versus intimacy in 2017. And today is just controversy <laughs> because it seems that some people are having a challenge. Also, we have a troll, by the way. So there's one person on my stream who's a troll who, um, for whatever reason, will get on there and put a bunch of angry faces only during these times that we've been talking about sex. So this has been a really big thing. Some people are highly offended that a 17-year-old who's turning 18, who, by the way, is a mom, is talking intelligently. <laughs> this is my issue. Intelligently about this topic. Um, someone made a comment to her this week, which I thought was extremely obtuse, and uh, basically suggesting to her that she was um, highlighting her teenage sex life because she's speaking intelligently about the topic of sex. What's interesting about that is Yakira does not have a teenage sex life. She had a baby at 12, she got pregnant at 11, she had a baby at 12, she's had no interaction sexually since then. So, huge assumption, very, very broad, but the fact that she speaks intelligently, someone has a problem with her speaking intelligently. Also, I'm turning 18 in less than a month. <laughs> like um, three weeks. Yeah, so 
I hope that I'm knowing what I'm talking about at this point, because if I'm talking about sex unintelligently at this point, then I she's got a I'm doing, problem. Yeah, I'm doing being it. a mom and everything else. She's got an issue. Yeah. Um, I want I want to say thank you, and this is I'm just doing my housekeeping right now. Thank you to all of those of you who sent prayers and support and sent your positive energy for Jonathan. We are facing an extremely difficult time. Uh, he is facing a huge challenge right now, and we just really appreciate all of those of you who have supported us, who um, uh, just, you know, showing favor. We want to say thank you. And um, from there, we're just going to say hello to everybody. So, hey, John, how are you doing? What's up, everybody? Um, I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, once again, I got another good day of sleep. Another good day of sleep. The day before wasn't, it was weird. I don't really, like, I literally blended my day. So yesterday I thought it was Monday. I don't know how that happened. But, yeah, I got good sleep, so I'm back on track. We good to go. Awesome. How are you, Yikira? Um, I'm good. Just trying to keep my mind right from insanity at this point. Awesome. I want to acknowledge some of those of you who are on. Jason, you're going to be proud of me. I got, I'm got. i looking like y'all now on drunk, the Drunk Dudes and Diamond. <laughs> Two Drunk Dudes and Diamond. I want to say hello to Tawana. Hey, Smash. Yep. Uh, Tawana Brown, Sierra, my niece. And Hi, then Sierra. Barnes. Hello, sir. Uh, Jason Johnson. What's up, Big Bear Man? Uh, Miss Adrian. Hi. How's it going? If you're, if you're on the stream today, do us a favor and at least say hello to us so that we can acknowledge you and say hello. Some of those of you who are friends of friends, I can't see you unless you let me know you're there. So we'd love to have your participation. We'd love to have your in interaction. And we would hope that you're going to join in on this communication with us. So now, I'm going to introduce my spesh, my very beautiful spesh here. She's, she's claiming that she's shy, but can you say hello to all of our what's up? wonderful confession participants? Hey guys, I am so blessed right now, uh, feeling privileged to be on the show, first of all, because I've never ever done anything like this. Um, I'm really on Facebook, and just to be in presence of greatness and oh, a beautiful Lord. family. Goodness. I love this lady. I haven't seen her in eight, nine, years, eight or nine, eight or nine years. years. Um, so just reconnecting with Soraj and, and family, it's just been a, a blessed year. Right. If you have people around you that you love, give them a hug, a kiss. Them Absolutely. You love them, appreciate them, live your life. Yes. Enjoy your life. You get this high. Only once. once. We only once. get to go around once. Don't and be afraid. Do what you do. Here's the thing, I've known Annette for well over 20 plus years. We came into the, well we went to the Ohio State University together and I actually had the privilege of bringing her in to my illustrious sorority which is now our illustrious sorority and she has been a sister for all that time and it's now, what is probably 26 years for you? 27 for me, 26 for her and um, you know when you have loved ones that are blood relatives, that's great, but when you can have a sisterhood and a kinship and they're not even your blood, but they actually are as close to you and sometimes even closer yeah. than some of our, our, our life relatives, I think it's just been great. Um, this was my little cut buddy. Anytime we had to do any big major trips or anything like that, Annette was there, Donnell Caramello was there, you know, and so I'm just really, like she said, she's feeling blessed, I'm really feeling blessed too. So let's get into it. What's the first thing we're going to talk about today? Because all of these topics that we've got, these controversial issues, can go somewhere. Jonathan, did you read any of the comments underneath the Colin Kaepernick um, post on my page? I did not see the Colin Kaepernick post, okay. so I have no clue what that's about. Okay, so grab your phone if you can. and. No, I'll do it. I'll do okay, it. let Yakira pull it up. Uh, and then I think you can... you're going to be interested to read this one. Yeah, because your friend Tyler, actually, your brother, and I love Tyler, he made a comment, but I think people are trying to help him understand that um, mm -hmm. this issue about Colin Kaepernick <laughs> taking a knee, yeah, taking a knee um, 
you know, and quote unquote disrespecting the flag. Uh, there's a huge issue about that, and it's a very sensitive and touchy subject. But coming from a people who uh, are not protected in the same way by that flag that even our relatives, our ancestors, our you know who've been here have suffered and died for. So it's not just white America who has suffered or made sacrifices for this flag, but we are not protected. Those of us, of uh, uh, most of us, minorities, Latinos, African Americans. Um, some Asian Americans, we don't necessarily have the same protection and the same freedom that you all can celebrate as far as white America and what that flag represents for you. And so that's kind of what some of the comments are uh, addressing. There's no disrespect to anyone in my sphere. Remember that. True Confessions is all about loving yourself. Where's my keeping with the love? Here it is. It's our motto. We share love here, we respect others' ideas, but we don't bring judgment. Nothing is off limits and nothing is taboo, but we don't personalize and make personal attacks against anyone in this sphere. I think successfully have had this show going on more than a year now. This is our 60th consecutive week, and we have been successful at keeping personal attacks and personal charges off of this show and out of the comments. So thank you guys who participate because you've been very, very cooperative in assisting me share the love. So we're going to get into that a little bit and just kind of read some of those comments um, and just kind of see how the panel here, how we, what our thoughts about the comments are. Um, again, just as a generalized statement, we're not reading who said what, we're not going to be reading people's names. You guys can go on my page and see it. You, you, you'll know who said what. But we're just kind of giving a general thought about it. The other thing... Mm, what? Sorry, I just read a comment that was in response to John's brother's comment. Yeah. And he was like... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So That was a tad bit racist, but okay. Okay, okay, let's... How about we start there? Because yeah, because I'm like, wait a second. And sex will take us the whole rest of the hour. So we'll I get why this. he said that, though. Okay, so... Well, read, read, yeah, read, I was read saying, my post. Okay, okay, read, okay. What the, read what the video is about. So, um, basically the video is about Colin Kaepernick taking his knee during the, the pledge and um, the national anthem and stuff like that. But... But it's because of, you know... No, 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 no. The point of the video was basically all those who scrutinized him and said that he was all talk, no action. This video is actually highlighting the service and what he is doing for the communities at large, wow, stating so. that he is not just all talk, all, no action. Mm -hmm. He has actually um, donated, or he has been working to donate a million dollars and successfully so far has donated a hundred thousand dollars a month to various different organizations that are community based, uh, that deal with at risk communities and also is what working and fighting oppression of all kind in America, but definitely in the communities that he was stressing and the African American community specifically. So that's what they were that's what the video was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, that he wasn't just, you know, putting on a show, that he is backing it up with his own money. And then they go into even the records of it, that all every dollar, every dime, every donation is actually accounted for and documented. So that's what that was about. So then um, I put on here, my, my comment was, I hear, and it had dot, 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 crickets. crickets. <laughs> because they were talking about where are Colin Kaepernick's um, haters? Yeah, basically, where are the critiques now? You know, nobody is saying, and they can't really say very much to say how terrible he is. So all of a sudden, now it's a little quiet. But then there was a response to Colin Kaepernick's original participation or lack of participation in saluting the, the flag. And I say, if, the that's the, if that's what the video is about, then there's no need for that comment in the first place because that's not even what the video is about. Right. Once again, this is the same thing he did to what I posted. I posted exactly. Exactly. And he commented something that didn't even have to do with what I was posting. I'm like, that's not the point 
of the post whatsoever. So why you're talking to me right now? Why you're on my post? I don't know. Mind your business. But anyway, yeah, so 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 this was what the the video is about. I'm not so sure that the original person who responded negatively about Colin Kaepernick's original taking of the knee actually paid attention he, to I what the video was the about. Video. They just saw it. Colin Kaepernick and then you just have your things to say. Clickbait. So, read, yeah, clickbait. So read what, what the comment so was. Read the, the initial comment and then you can start reading some of the other ones. Talk okay, so the initial comment that we're talking about, it says that flag represents why you have the life you have now. By the sacrifices of uh, the by the sacrifices others have made, so it can fly. More people have lost their lives defending that flag. People of all color die for what it represents, which is the freedom you have today. Just saying. So and can then, I no? Like, then read read so, my response. To so that. then she responds. Don't say the name though. Just read it. She responds. I agree. The sacrifice that sacrifice was made. So why are people mad that he is exercising the right rights <laughs> that people died for? Seems why to are me, people mad? Yeah, why, that's what he said. Why are people mad that he is exercising the rights that people died for? Seems to me that if the freedom to exercise your rights is what the sacrifice is made for, then those very freedoms should be exercised. Otherwise, the sacrifice was in vain. In other words, if we truly believe that the sacrifice was made so people could exercise their rights, it would be a travesty if you don't exercise them. So why are people mad that he is doing exactly what those who paid the ultimate sacrifice gave their lives for? Whether I agree with how he chooses to exercise his rights or not, the point is he is actually exercising them. Just saying. Um, my comment to what he's saying is people have died, period. Like, honestly, people have died for existing. People have died because they look different from what you look like, not because of that flag, if we're honest with each other. Now, so, <laughs> read, read this comment. Read so this then, comment. Read wait, John Monique? Design. Yeah, read John Design's comment, because that's a very insightful. So then, a little later down, past the, we'll get back to past some we'll other stuff. Um, they said, oh my, such a touchy subject. One thing is, for sure, there have been many events past and current which lead to in individual experiences living in America. Colin is a stand-up guy, and I don't agree with all of his ideals. This is about more than a flag. This is about right and wrong, and black people are being oppressed and exploited in this country under this flag right now. I know my history. Wars have been fought under the U.S. flag only for black people to still remain second-class citizens. It is preposterous for anyone to believe blacks should have the same reverence for a symbol and continued oppression. We can continue to debate the representation or we can accept the, that every solution to improving the black condition starts with divorcing the system and building our own. Peace and blessings, beautiful people. Okay. And then mom responds, beautifully expressed sissy. Yes, now, barring anybody's opinions and any, um, how you choose to even respond to that and express yourself, it may come off negatively, it may come off passionately, but everybody has a right to their um, opinion yeah. and their expression. But that response right there, along with what I feel like I was just trying to generally speak of, if you're telling me you are so enraged because someone died to give me a right, why would you be mad when I ex exercise that right? Yeah. That means you're a hypocrite. Yeah. That means that's not what your real issue actually is. And so, um, but the way that the last comment was expressed and broke this down, think about it. Why would you believe that um, black people in America, i.e. what Colin was talking about, would have the same reverence and the same respect for a symbol that does not protect us the same way? There are black individuals in America who are still being oppressed, who are still suffering at the hands of supposedly those who are in authority who are there to protect us. Yeah. And we're not being protected. So I understand it. Like I said, whether I agree with how anyone chooses mm -hmm. to exercise their right, my position is if the people in the military, if our military and our country fights to have those rights, then we should be able to exercise them. 
Period. Enough said, and nobody should really have anything to say about it. Now, um, I feel like the military, people in the military see it differently, though. I feel like they come from a different mindset, just for the fact that when you're on the front line, and I hope John can, you know, kind of help me with this one. When we you're have on the front line, watch, so you yeah, guys can talk when you're to on us. the front line and you see the person next to you, you're not seeing the color of their skin. And that's where the problem is. But these police officers, that's all they see. And it's just like, you know, vets come in all the time. I remember seeing a video, and this really did make me proud of... Real quick, just uh, to point on the statement. Um, when it comes to the front lines, soldiers don't see color necessarily. Um, there are still those that are a little interesting. We always yeah. have our bad There's apples, just like one. there is in everywhere. Uh, same thing with the police. Um, as far as police go, though... Police are the same way. They're exactly like soldiers in the set that they don't see color, but they don't see color amongst blue. Um, people outside of blue is where it starts to get interesting. Exactly. Um, so when it comes down to, oh, I don't see color, but this is that, they also have an issue because with us, we don't have any outside, like we can have our own opinions on certain things, but when you're in a firefight, there really is no opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just... You know, respect that my brother next to me has my back, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been in a few, so you know, there, there's no time to think about. Well, Dad, he, he's Mexican. I don't think you know he's gonna really roll with me. No, there's none of that. For Blue, you actually have time to think. You know, you got time to sit in the office and think about some stuff and question some stuff and you hear stuff. And they got internal affairs and all this other. There's a lot of stuff that really goes into, you know, sometimes the controversy of police. So I don't really like to compare soldiers and policemen um, because we're <coughs> two different extremes. Uh, we're both soldiers to a respect, but we're way two different extremes. I mean, one's fighting for the whole entire country, the other one's trying to protect my doorstep. Yeah, so. sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. And what I was saying was, <laughs> I saw a video where <coughs> this uh, vet was trying to buy some food and this white lady was like, going off on this Muslim person for, like, existing, like, oh, my God, you need to go back to your country. And so, like, the vet, like, was like, yo, if you're mad, like, you don't need to buy the food from here. Like, you need to get out or you need to respect them and just buy your food, you know, just be respectful. He's like, I fought for him as well. He's an American I fought for you. Exactly. He's like, I fought for him as well as fighting for you. So don't disrespect anybody in this country because he has just as right to be here as you do. So she kind of was like, what? You know, <laughs> and I'm just like, see, but I feel like if it was a police officer, not every police officer is like this, and I get that, but certain police officers, if it was a certain police officer who saw that, they wouldn't say anything or they would agree with the, the white woman. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, they would have acted like that man's presence or what he was doing, whatever he was doing, was what the cause of the disturbance was. Exactly. And in actuality, he was just trying to buy a hot dog. Actually, he was the server. That's what I mean, oh, though. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so what I mean, though. He was it's, it's working. Yeah, he was working. So person. he had a legitimate job. He was working. Okay. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, like, the difference of mindset. The mindset is different between people in the military and people pretty much on the force. Um, it's just, it, we're not the same. Plain and simple. We're not the same. And I would never you call know, I would respect them as much as anybody else, but we're not the same. So mm -hmm. I don't like being categorized with them at all because we're not the same. Matter of fact, I know a lot of soldiers don't like police. So. Spash, what do you think about that? Like just this whole, based on what was read there, and that's really what we were going to talk about today because it seems to be so controversial. Um, and it is a very touchy subject because people's emotions get involved due to the fact that they have personal experience <laughs> one way or the other. Um, you know, white America cannot say that they have had the experience of black Americans, um, melanated individuals in this country, period, and consistently say, so because we all have the same experience, we're all Americans, you should have the same respect. No. I don't feel that way, but what do you say? That's kind of heavy. <laughs> controversy. That's why today is called controversy. If some of you could um, put some, put your thoughts down, uh, as long as you're not calling anybody out directly or personally attacking, all of your comments are welcome and your thoughts. We'd like to share. That's what this is all about today. 
Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of comments, but just say uh, coming from the Midwest, there's a lot of division subtle racism and not so subtle huh? right so there's a lot of division i mean there's areas in my area where i grew up that you know as a, a white american you can go your whole entire life and not really interact with someone of color and so when they do come into certain er areas or neighborhoods uh i've seen a lot of times where the the neighborhoods have changed the more the black people come in the more they move out further west um so it's just it's always changing and just even true to the city i currently live in uh just downtown you know there's a lot of attrition there too where uh, the the landscape is changing um because it's un it's not affordable for those who have made the neighborhood what it is today regentrification yes regentrification. That's, what it sounds like that's, to me. that's the word regentrification thank you so the people who built it and, and who have been there forever can no longer even afford to live there in their neighborhood. And they're being pushed out. Right. And they gave the neighborhood the flavor and the culture that is so desired by others to have today. But the fact that, for example, Guns N' Roses at the Apollo. Yeah, well, at yeah. the Apollo. Yes. I saw that. I was right there yeah. last week. Yes. Oh I was like, now look. Yeah. 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 Gentrification, <laughs> and then the audience at the Pablo Theater mm. has changed oh, yeah. significantly. They still got concerts, Sandman, mm -hmm. but yeah, all kinds of stuff. But though. yeah, everything's different now. I think it's good that you have a lot more integration. It's different if there's integration. It's a problem if you have now pushed a group out and have taken their space. Yeah. Kind of like we annexed this country. <laughs> Right. You know, the, the, the settlers, the early settlers annexed this country. So we didn't necessarily, no one discovered it. You can't discover something where people are yeah, already right. there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah, it got annexed. <laughs> where it really hits home for me and where I really see it, um, it's funny because I'm part of theater and I'm also an improv. And so there's certain subjects that, you know, my coach always tells us not to hit and the main ones are race and religion and politics. Those are the main three, race, religion, and politics. And so me being, well, for the most part, I'm usually like the only black person on the team. So <laughs> I'm like, well, I think I'm allowed to pull a race card. Like, I think that should be okay, you know? So I'll bring out African accents and, you know, like they've been to my shows, so they see what I do. But no one else will ever touch that line because they know if they do, they're going to be seen racist. And I'm like, I really don't think you should look at it that way. Because if it's for an entertainment purpose, okay, I get, okay, it's a stereotype. If I do an Asian voice right now, okay, all of a sudden I'm a racist. Not really. It's just something that, okay, you see it all the time. Honey, let me do the jail, the crypto jail on your nail. Does that make me a racist? No, you see it all the time. When you go to the nail salon and they say crypto jail, you're automatically like going to want to laugh. Like I'm sorry, but if you don't, you're you're just ridiculous and you're just all, way too politically correct. So when my coach tells me don't bring up race, I look at him like, okay, come on now, like you know who you're talking to, right? And the other part where it hits home for me is at school, where I can't stand the black people at my school sometimes because they hang out with these white kids, but not understanding that white kids aren't like with them that particular group of white yeah that you know so like they're like oh yeah these are my best friends and we're you know we're cool and i'm like okay but when you really need that person are they going to be there for you like a black person would are they really going to oh, hold on wait let me finish what i'm saying are they really going to understand the struggles when you're facing racism are they going to stand up for you like a black person would when someone calls you a nigger i'm sorry like because i'm sure they've said it behind your back like and so some of the people that I've talked to about it, like, they're just like, no, no, they would never do that. You know, they're 100% for me. And I'm like, are they really, though? Because they're making jokes about us being monkeys all the time, whether they're saying it to your face or not. I'm not friends with them, so I hear what they're saying behind your back. And so then they just try to give me a look, and I'm like, oh, that's just what it is. And 
you're never going to be with them 100% because you're not them. You're not in the Lamborghinis. You're not in the big houses. You don't, some of us are. Some of us are, but not all of us. And the ones who are, we're still not part of them. Yep, I'm like, no matter so what, now it gets part. into classism. And so th this is also what I wanted to say. I don't think we can make a universal racial declaration that all people do this or all people do that. Because in actuality, the person who wrote the comment about the flag, it wasn't so much about race. He was trying to distinguish and, and pull race out of it. That's actually what his point was, saying that it's more about the flag itself and you've disrespected it. And people of all nationalities have died for that flag. That's what he was saying. He's trying to kind of make it not a black and a white thing. No, I get what but the doing. point is, that it is a racial issue with Colin Kaepernick, and that's what he was highlighting. So you can't pull black and white out of it. Now, I'll also say that that same person sees Jonathan as a brother and was the first one that went to blows with a group of white kids who happened to let the word you nigger come out, okay? He's, well, obviously he's Caucasian, y'all have, I'm sure y'all picked that up, but he was the first one to go to blows before Jonathan could swing at anybody, before that whole group of black kids who they were with could swing at anyone. So he's not racist. I understand that. And he's trying to be as diplomatic as he knows how to be. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem. When you are coming from a different filter and you don't come from a, a filter of the mind of an individual who has been oppressed, regardless of where they were oppressed or how they were oppressed, you can't understand that. Yeah. And you don't really have the right to dictate or try to make uh, a point to tell them that they can't experience and feel what they're feeling. They can't have the opinion that they have. They can't uh, go through the suffering that they've been through. Mm -hmm. You can't minimize that. You can't take that away from them. You can't say, oh, well, you need to get over it. Why? It's still happening today. If it was something, and even that, if it was just my ancestors, I'm not over that either, but I can go outside. My son, right now, is in a situation because he's a black male, all right? So I can't get over it. It hasn't gotten over me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and when it gets over me, then maybe we can have a different discussion. Right. That's just kind of how I feel about that. And my thing is also, so this... Because it's summer, I want to say this, July 4th was a little bit ago, and if you really think about it, segregation wasn't that long ago. Slavery was, you know, it, was a long, it wasn't too long ago. It was long enough for us to be like, okay, you know, all right. I wasn't but a slave. <laughs> I wasn't, he's like, I wasn't a slave, and my grandfather wasn't a slave, but. But it wasn't so long ago that it wasn't forgotten. Exactly. And so you can't say your great-grandfather wasn't. Exactly, and that's my point. So it's just like, okay, so July 4th, the first July 4th, there were definitely slaves. <laughs> that's for sure. There's been slaves for... There's been slaves for so many years. And then after that, once we got rid of slaves, there were still lynchings. There were still so many things that were going on with black people, and we're supposed to be celebrating the flag. The law supposedly changed, but the behaviors and, and the activities... Actually, I'm going to liken this unto, in fact, some of it got worse because it went underground, all right? So I'm going to just use this, um, this analogy since we've got some black, letter Greek, black Greek letter organization representation here. Um, there is a, a movie out on Netflix, I think it is. It's called Burning Sands, okay? And in this movie, it's highlighting, it's a, a black uh, Greek letter organization of course, it's a fabricated one. It's not one of the actual Divine Nine. But they're showing how, because of the laws of how pledging had changed due to hazing, that now they're still being pledged, but they're not being pledged openly anymore. Now it's underground, okay? Which means now there's no accountability whatsoever. So if there was a public uh, display, for example, of racism, and you, there were certain things that were allowed publicly, and that's what happened. Well, when the law changed, now they're going to go underground, and they're going to take you, and they're going to do more damage because they have no accountability whatsoever. 
and they're being protected still in those behaviors, those travesties. The issue is, once it's underground, everybody is in danger, okay? And that's kind of the same thing as far as this, this movie, where at the, I'm not going to tell you all the actual end, <laughs> but it got very, very dangerous for these young men because they were underground. They were being pledged with no accountability to anyone. So in essence, the pledging became hazing. And the hazing became something even worse than hazing. All right? So that's kind of how I, I see the fact that, yeah, our laws changed. What was written in the book changed. But now people just get real sneaky and do even more damaging things to individuals because they have no one watching them. No one's telling them, okay, this is your limit. This is the boundary. Now they have no boundaries. And that's very dangerous for everybody. And as far as, I'm going to just say this too. I'm going to just make this one statement about Trump. You guys, y'all know I don't hardly ever talk about politics, but it's controversy today. I am infuriated with his insistence that he is protecting us from terrorists by limiting, limiting, I'm going to just say that, limiting Muslim access into our country. Because in my experience, and as far as I know, on an everyday, the terrorists I'm concerned about are right here. They are Caucasians, they wear hoods, and are allowed to walk freely. All right? Those are terrorists. So I don't see my Muslim brothers that are, what do you call them? Just, you know, they're trying to be productive members of society, like the guy who was working. No, yes, I'm just saying they're just trying to be productive citizens. But because they're Muslim, you're going to call them a terrorist. But we've got true terrorists that proudly walk and wear their colors and wear their hoods, and, and we say nothing. We say nothing in America to them. Are you kidding me? So until Donald Trump decides that he's going to deal with what's in front, if right in front of his, his face, well, after he takes off his hood. But anyway, <laughs> once he takes off his and finally decides he's going to actually work toward America's greatness overall, which I don't believe he can, because I don't think that's his true agenda, but that's my, that's my opinion about that. But it's, there's so much more terrorism that we can take a party to the police officers that are killing black males, killing black people who are laying defenseless. You guys can't say it's not happening. But we're telling you it has happened all the time since the beginning. Now you can just see it on video because people have their phones. Now you see it every day. And you still don't want to believe it. It's still okay. You still want us to be quiet about it. No, they don't. They believe it, but they want to say it's our fault. <laughs> now that's really what that really gets to me. I'm sitting there. I'm saying, okay, you know, okay, so I just watched this video where this guy is on the ground and his arms are completely by his, behind his back. They have a dog ripping in his arm. And so these two guys are like, y'all can't get your dog off of him? Like, are you serious? He's screaming bloody murder. They're telling him to shut up while this dog is tearing through his arm. Like, are you serious? I'd be like, no, you shut up. First of all, shoot me if you want to, but get the damn dog off of him. What the hell is wrong with you? Let me get my dog. Take the damn gun away. Take the tasers away. Take the batons away. Let me put my dog on you and see what the hell you do. You will be screaming bloody murder and asking me to take the dog off. Like, are you serious? Telling me to shut up because I want you to take a dog off a man who's just laying there. And the guy's saying, yo, stop talking. Like, just let them do what they're doing. He's yelling, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. Because he doesn't want to get shot in the head. Dude has a gun on his back and everything. Like, <sighs> these police officers, like. <sighs> so here's the thing. Okay, so you see a lot of passion. You hear a lot of energy. I'm not upset right now. I'm just saying that you can't see through that filter if it's not happening to you. And for some people, even if you see it and you think you understand, you think you're outraged, you're still not experiencing it the same way. You're not. 
And there's going to be a time when many people will say, well, you know, they just need to get over that. Slavery was 400 years ago. We don't care. I'm not talking about slavery. I'm talking about my son, who I have to worry about walking out the door because he's a black male. That's up today, not 400 years ago. Today. And that's what the whole point of Colin Kaepernick's protest or his exercising of his right was. He could not honor a flag that does not honor and protect him and his community the same way it protects others. Exactly. No, tell us. Oh, the, the one that just got killed? All right, share. We we don't share. Have, I don't know the whole story. <laughs> but I, I, I would just say that, uh, so Minnesota, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. there was a... a, a Black woman. No, she's a white lady. <coughs> white lady got, oh, the one that got shot, the police got officer? The police officer. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, <coughs> you know. And then all of a sudden they, there was attention to it. Oh, yeah. So, so they didn't see blue. They were seeing blue until she got shot. Now it's an issue. How come it wasn't an issue when any other black person got shot? This stuff that we face How come it's an issue daily. when daily. the Caucasian woman is shot? Now we have to go up in arms and have an issue with police officers. Are you kidding me right now, for real? So again, not the same responses, not the same protection. Not even that, but also, why? Okay, so I haven't really seen anything about black people getting shot on Snapchat. And I know it happens often. <coughs> and I'm on Snapchat a lot. So I saw something on Snapchat talking about this police officer shooting two pit bulls, and I'm like, okay, okay, let me look at look at what this is, and I get why they're pretty upset because you know the, the people are upset or the or the, the police the people the people are upset. So basically, what happened was this uh, daughter got home, and so the they had an alarm that went off, and she didn't know the code, so she's trying to call her mom like, I don't know what the code is, it's not working, and so her mom's like, that's not the code, I'll call you later. Instead of giving her the code, which you would think that would have been easy solved. So the police arrive thinking it's a robbery or something like that. And so one of the police officers goes in the back and this dog starts running towards him. And then stops before he gets near the dang police officer. Starts like walking slowly towards the dude. And then the like police officer just shoots him for no reason whatsoever. You can see it on video from two different angles pretty clearly. And then another dog comes and he shoots the other dog as well. So when he goes to the owner, because the, the owner is like distraught, she's crying, and the dog's like, is the dog okay? No, you shot him six damn times, first of all. And then he's like, you know, it's kind of your fault for leaving the dogs out. No, it's not my fault. You saw the dog stop. <laughs> it didn't just run at you and jump. And it is a pit bull, so I understand. But it stopped. He was, it's racial. I mean, it's exactly. not, no, I'm not saying it's stereotypical. He was afraid of it because of what he thinks he knows about pit bulls. Exactly. And so he's like, I don't want to shoot no dogs. I love dogs. If you love dogs, you would have noticed that that dog stopped and was showing very excited and happy behavior instead of aggressive behavior. But you proceeded to shoot him anyway. But my thing is like, hey, I get that he shot a dog, all right? I'm sorry about your loss and they're having difficulties with the dog, but... Why am I seeing that on Snapchat instead of y'all, instead of me seeing these kids who got shot on their way home from school? From the playground? The yeah, stopped at the playground. exactly. Like, why am I, why am I, I not seeing that? About that. that? Yeah, cool. like, I had to find that somewhere officer else. was afraid of a group of 12-year-olds who was coming off of a playground, and he got scared and started shooting at them. Okay, why do we have... <laughs> Officers who, who are, are afraid. afraid of kids. Yes. Why do we have? Why are y'all so scared? Why are you <laughs> doing a job that you are afraid of kids? In the blue. Why? Why is the blue so scared? What? What are you so scared of? Doesn't your? Aren't you professional? Don't you have training? Shoot, you got a gun. They don't, and you're still scared. Really? <laughs> I don't think you're scared. Are you a bitch? <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't think that's fear. That's motivating that. If I don't have a gun, and you have a gun, but you're scared enough of me that you're going to shoot me, and I'm not even standing in your face. Bogus. I'm across the street, walking across the street. Walking away from you. That's like a lion being afraid of a gazelle. 
That don't even make sense. <laughs> that's true. That's a good analogy, too. Exactly. Like, really? Come on now. But his horns were, like, he had really long horns. That's the line. The, ho the, the horns just terrified me on that gazelle. Which is why I had to and, 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 that, and that gazelle can run real fast. So, I had to eat him. But I could break I had to his get bones. I could break his bones just I had once to twice. Him, you know, on that one gazelle, because I was scared of it. <laughs> That's the lion talking. Exactly. All right. I guess we can beat a dead horse. But um, one of the participants on there was speaking very personally about his family's contribution uh, in the military services as a black uh, male in World War II and still had to come back to America Have after fighting that? for America, no, and not having any of the rights that he supported and fought, fought for yeah. uh, as an American coming back as and a black And even in the war, I'm sure they still, because I've seen documentaries in history, and in the war they had separate bunkers, and they were still treated, yeah, they were still treated like crap, and it's like, yo, I'm on the front line with you, I'm dying with you, <laughs> like... And you're still going to make it seem like I'm less of a person and I'm doing the exact same thing you are? I, I'm sorry. It, I, I really do have a hard time respecting a flag that will let me stand next to you, let me die with you, but still say I'm less than you. And won't protect you. And won't protect me. I really So I, we understand that. And that's all we're saying. We're not saying that, uh, again, I'm not saying that I agree with everything uh, and every expression that people choose to express their rights and exercise their rights with, but we understand it. That's what all of this is about. And we're just giving some other examples to kind of give you from our filter why we see what's, what's happening, why we're experiencing it, and why we understand that you might not. You know, some of you others may not really get it. You're not quite sure, and you think it's something trifling and petty. You know, and that we're being trite and petty, but we're not. Nope. I'm concerned about both of my children, but specifically this one, okay? Because this one seems to be the one that's the endangered species. This one seems to be the one that is primarily targeted. And it's not that females don't get targeted also, but the ones that just because they're walking around it with skin that's melanated and a penis, they're they are so in scary. danger. They're just so scary. They are in danger. And so, yes, I'm concerned about that. You're in danger, Molly. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we've got a lot of people on here. Let me do a quick social media break. I hope I have not, uh, well, I'm unapologetic in me, being who I am. And you guys, I really want to encourage you to be unapologetically who you are. If you have some differing uh, thoughts and opinions, please share them. I don't claim to have all answers. I really don't. Um, all we're talking about is what we've seen through our filter. And that's what it is. And that's why I don't get upset with anybody who doesn't understand who, or who doesn't see or can't accept what I'm saying. They're not looking through my filter, okay? And they can't, and so that's okay. So please share with us if you have something. I want to say hello to, to Pamela Rainey. Hey, Brother Ruel. Hey, Jelks. Uh, Stacy Christensen, Dr. Jackson, <laughs> Stephanie M. Jackson is on. You know, you know Stephanie Jackson. Oh, yeah, 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 Dr. Hey, Dr. Jackson. Hey. Yeah, you remember my special yeah. net, uh, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, Makeup Sin Brown now. Uh, Scott Ballard, hey. Oscar Romero, hi, Oscar. DJ Craig C., Jackie Salinas, hola, mija. Kenosha is on. Diamond, what's up, Diamond? Ryder at Diamond. Uh, Lafonza Hastings, hey, Darren Craig Morrow, John Ballard, T to the Gray, love you, Tony Gray, uh, Eddie Morales, como esta, Eddie, uh, let's see, Helen Clark, hey, Miss Helen, I hope you're doing well, I saw that you were recuperating, Jessica Lynn Fleming, hi, Jessica, Tanya, Tanya Ward, and I think these are some of my stories on here. Randy, uh, Pastor Randy is here. Will Usher, um, Valencia Blue. Hey, Valencia. Uh, DJ, David Jordan Lane. Hi, DJ. Smooches. My soror, Elena Pratt. What's up, soror? Yep. Let's see. Matthew, um, Marin Bloom. We already talked.
out to Tawana, Kenny Curry, Delani Stevenson, Miss Adrian, James Kevin Mathis, that's my brother, and Emmanuel Barnes, JJ, Jason Johnson, Sierra, and there are a multiplicity of others, but that's all that I can see right now. Look, thank you guys so much for joining us. So now we got to switch over to this issue with the sex talk. All right. There has, it has come to my attention that some individuals have a significant issue with my 17-year-old <laughs> speaking her mind and showing her brilliance, but she's speaking on the subject of sex. So they have an issue with that. Some people have an issue that my son speaks about it with his sister, who's 17. And the biggest thing, though, is they're pissed off at me. <laughs> because I have the nerve and the audacity to prepare my, my children to be safe in a society as it relates to sex. How dare I do that? How dare I give them information? How dare I teach them the right and the wrong? How dare I tell them, you know what? You can get in danger here. There's, there are illnesses that can kill you. Yes, this is a perfectly natural phenomenon, but you know what? If you're irresponsible, it can kill you. How dare I tell them that? <laughs> Somebody's got a pad has already showed her pornography. Huh? I guarantee you. Uh, uh, she's... 
I guarantee you somebody said, in I her would, school. I would, I would go that like, far, but I would say. Year old. The 12 year old definitely seen something. But the not this is what I'm trying I to would say. say. I would say the nine year old definitely knows what sex is. They I wouldn't say that they know what it looks like yet. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I, not. I, I, There's I, a possibility though. <laughs> well, it, it depends. Because by nine, I knew what it looked like. <laughs> but, 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 I just watch TV, I think, right? I think it depends. My my daughter is still into baby dolls. She watches YouTube. It's all baby dolls. Mm-hmm. That's you know what she's in, and and she's clearly a child child. Like she's a child child. She believes in fairy tales, two fairy. And so she's still at. The, but it doesn't the, mean that someone in her sphere is where she is. Yeah. But and even so, at that age, I I didn't know anything. I know. I think, Things have changed. Yeah, they have changed. Yeah, let me tell you my testimony. Let me tell you my testimony. Just because just, I think people need. Yeah, because like understand. the fact that okay, I was so really what you just said person. like literally <laughs> is why people really just need to talk to their kids about it. Um. At seven, at six, at six, first grade, I heard the word sex, and I was like, "Oh, what's that?" Because one of my friends was like, "Sex," and I was like, oh, "What's that?" And they're like, "Oh, you don't know what it is? I'll show you." And I was like, "Oh, okay. I'll take a moment and run away because that doesn't sound right." Because he just had this devious face, like, and I was like, "I'm uncomfortable," so I ran away. At nine, at seven, at seven. Sorry, at seven, I go to my dad's house and he's watching the show called True Blood. I'm watching it with my father. At True seven, Blood is very on pornographic. TV. True it's Blood is very. Can you? Oh, I'm telling her because she heard story. She can hear. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> well, True Blood. Could have been well, on I don't TV. watch television too but much. But your kids do. My kids. Do. And that's why I'm telling you. I love you. Reject. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, she was watching True uh, Blood on TV with my dad, and it's very pornographic. Um, so that's not even what disturbed him. You would think as soon as a sex scene would come on, he would turn it off or tell me to leave the room or something. He was perfectly fine with me watching the sex. But as soon as they said a sexual joke, I laughed. And he's like, why is that funny? So after that, I was like, I'm not talking to adults about sex. No, as soon as you say the word, I'm cringing, making it seem like I don't know anything about it. And then at nine, I was talking to one of my cousins about masturbation and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, it should be like totally normal. And you know, and my cousin's like, no, that's disgusting. And I'm like, why? And so her mom comes in and like gives us a mini discussion, but then goes behind my back and talks to my dad and like basically snitches on me saying I'm the one who's this dirty whore basically. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, I just, I didn't know what was going on. So then my dad gives my mom a call at nine years old saying I'm talking about this and what am I doing talking about this but yet he forgot so soon that he had me watching a pornographic show so it's just like it is really easy especially nowadays it's actually easier to get a hold of porn at this point because on accident it's everywhere on and accident, on exactly. accident. And this because is why I'm trying to share with those of us and I know the frame of reference that Annette is at with her oh but she's just a kid because that's where I was with you Kira and yet, I come okay, up but yet she's pregnant by 11. I hadn't given her the talk yet because every time I tried to give her the talk or it brought up, she was, I'm, so I'm thinking, oh, she's not ready. But it wasn't that she wasn't ready. I don't care if you're ready. It was ready. that she, she got shut down. Them, them. <laughs> she was she, getting shut down. And so I'm thinking she wasn't quite there. She wasn't ready to have this discussion. Um, she didn't know what I was talking about. She was very uncomfortable. So I'm not trying if to I didn't know what you were talking about, I wouldn't have cringed. I'd be like, oh, what's that? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, People don't know what you're you talking about and literally look clueless. They actually yeah. more want to figure out what you're talking about. People so the fact that you were like, you hear us talk about it. sex, and I'm like, ew, you should automatically be like, no, that, that person knows <laughs> something about something. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a little sweet. Well, exactly. But she wiggled out of the conversation. I mean, she would say. Well, she, well, see, this is what mom did. She was like, don't come home with no babies. And I'm like, mom, I'm not even thinking about that. Bam. <laughs> Just like that. So, you That's know. what my dad would tell me. I'm like, what? What? Like, I, first of all, how do you think that that's going to scare me to not do something, first of all? Second of all, granted, I wasn't doing nothing. The one that would actually scare me was my Uncle Steven. That's because he would give you, you know, he would give you actual, like, doctor pictures of stuff that can go wrong <coughs> if you try to indulge 
uh, without having the necessary information that you're supposed to have. He's not, he's not saying that it's a bad thing. He's just like, look, get your information straight before you start doing something you don't have no business doing. And so he would have me and my brothers, you know, in a room, and he had like a big old binder of pictures of all kind of like BD, gonorrhea, all kinds of stuff. People After that, falling off. Yeah. After that, I'm like, mm, I don't think I want that no more. Mm, I'm good. I don't, I don't like that. Matter of fact, females got cooties. I don't care. I'm cool. I'll go back to my room and play my video games. I'm all right. Thank you, Uncle Steve. That's how it was, you know. But as soon as, you know. <laughs> My dad actually had to to be told to give me the talk. The talk was so awkward. Because yeah, by that I had time, to give it all I had already known. So I'm sitting there looking at him like, so what you going to say? Because I'll probably have a nice conversation with you if you actually want to talk about this. You know, like, we can bond right here for a second. No. <laughs> it wasn't even like that. It was more like, uh, so you know what do not do, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so... We see a female, and uh, you know you might get some feelings. You know, I'm like, <laughs> like, so Dad, I've known you to be some of the like most intelligent person when it comes to a lot of different topics. And right now you're stuttering. So what's wrong? Do you like, okay? What's wrong? Like, and I think sometimes, to... but sometimes because we're so uncomfortable, we actually inspire them and promote. Them going not with not on purpose, but we actually motivate them to go and try to figure out well, what is he so yeah. uncomfortable with. What is yeah, what, what's freaking it's my it's dad it's out? What is freaking my mom out? Mm -hmm. Why did this person like? Why did my aunt Annette cover her ears when mom said oral sex? Why when she said anal sex did she start like curling up in the ball even? What the heck is all of that? So. It's not that we were on here saying how to do it. If somebody wants to know, <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> or what happens when you do it. <laughs> if that's the conversation y'all want to have, ask the question. Oh, yeah. But ask the question. We'll answer any, nothing is off limits and nothing is taboo. But here's the thing. I can't tell you from your frame of reference and from your filter and your experience and your background, what's going to be appropriate and how to do what you got to do. I can only share to an extent what my thoughts about it are. Yeah. Because even if I'm with one individual to another individual, it's going to be a different experience. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's not like we're in here giving lessons. But again, if you want me to, well, class. there's a, okay. So, class. on a more serious note, though, <laughs> not even like diseases that can be transmitted. Things happen. Like, if you're honest with yourself, um, pe there are really bad people out there. And if you don't prepare your child and let them know, like, hey, if someone touches you and you really don't want them to touch you, you have to tell somebody because if they get in the throat. Well, there's that fight, fight you know, fight as well, but it's just like, if it, um, if it gets to the point. You don't know them, they start touching you. John, sort of, I get that, them, shut up. <laughs> sit them down, punch them in the throat, hurt them as bestly as possible. Yes, fight, we're not talking about that, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you need to have your child be comfortable with saying, someone touched me. Right, and that's where I'm at with my child, is like, Skylar, you know, because there was a time where someone hurt her, and she came straight to me as soon as she saw me, like, this happened, you know, and I was like, oh my God, you know, like, I was freaking out that that happened, but, you know, I was just like, okay, she told me, you know, so now it's like, I need to, it needs to keep happening to where she's able to talk to me and we can figure things out together, because if someone were to do something to her, first of all, I would pray to God that God is with me at that point, because I would most likely go on a hunting spree and chop some parts off. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's just like, I, I would, I really pray that it never happens. And this is kind of one of the reasons why I kind of wish I didn't have a daughter. Because it's like, but your sons are vulnerable to you. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a misconception. That 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 is, that's is the biggest thing. Sometimes no, yeah. it's a little bit worse. It, yeah. Actually, that happens more, more frequently. Stupid stuff. Yes, boys are molested oftentimes much more sooner. Sooner than girls, a yeah. lot of times, and it's much more frequent because they go into this shame thing 
early and they really don't talk. So it's just it's, like and they just, will shut down. So my thing is, so what happened with my mom was talking about how people were mad at her for me talking about sex knowledgeably and <laughs> um, knowing what I'm talking about basically. It's just like, so what you're saying is basically I shouldn't be able to go to my mom or anyone in that matter because if something happened to me at a party and I just, I'm messed up, I can't, now you're tell, telling me I can't go to someone and ask for help. You literally just said that. So it's like, you're crazy because now you're saying you don't care about my health, you don't care about my well-being, you don't care about the fact that I can communicate the fact that someone has done something to me. So it's just like, <sighs> you can excuse yourself. That's all I have to say. Excuse yourself from my life. We're done. Like, please don't come back because that was so just not thought through at all. And, and this so isn't unsafe. one person. We're talking about um, a couple people really had some issues. And this is the other part. We were talking about homosexuality because we were at, the question was about what is sex? What constitutes sex? And we were getting to the point that as far as the young people are concerned, oral sex is not sex. Anal sex, theoretically, based on the dictionary definition of sex, is not sex because the dictionary says sex is the act of a male penis penetrating the vagina of a female. Yeah. Okay? And so anal sex is not penetrating a vagina. Okay? Oral sex ain't penetrating <laughs> a vagina. All right? And because Bill Clinton oh, kind of com complicated that issue, um, stating he never had right, right, sexual right, relations right. with Miss Monica Lewinsky, there was a big push in this movement. Like I said, he kind of jacked the millennials up because that's what they were hearing and that's what they accepted. And then there was a lot of people who just, they just, they, well, they just wanted to, to have a reason and an excuse to do what they was trying to do anyway. Yeah. So now, well, I'm not having sex, but it's actually even deeper than that because Yakira has a bisexual friend who believes she's a virgin. No, she doesn't believe that. Not she now. Yes, yeah. she did. She, she no, said well, I'm a she, virgin. Well, because she, she really wasn't thinking about it, but she was like, and I was like, wait a second. And then she was like, well, I've never been with a guy. See? So she corrected herself because I got confused. But, <laughs> you know. But her thing was she was a virgin. Yeah. If you hadn't have interjected and said anything, in her mind, because she's not been penetrated by a male, she's still a virgin. Well, that's because she's talking to a straight male. So if, you're, if a straight male doesn't think homosexual and lesbian sex is, you know, sex either, then yeah, she is a virgin to him. I mean, it's all perception kind of thing. So, I mean, that's yeah, why I was like, I'm wait a second. To, it's yeah. It's going to be a different type of conversation. Exactly. Who I'm talking to. Because how I'm talking to you is not going to be in your frame of reference. So I'm going to dumb it down to your frame of reference so you can understand what I'm saying. Hey, you know, you got to dumb it down. Maybe you got to smart it up. Yeah, that's, like, that's what I'm saying. You can tell in conversation. But not I don't necessarily need to dumb it down. Just get, that's what I'm get on their level. Do that. Just get on their level. That's what I'm saying. Get on their level. If she had to get up to a level where he understands that, okay, well, then you smarted up. He obviously didn't understand that. So you well, I mean, down. there wasn't, no, he, or it, I was confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like, talking about that. I'm talking in general. I'm not even talking about your friend. I'm oh, talking okay. about in general. If a female that is bisexual that has to talk to a guy in this day and age, a centennial, that is nine times ten stupid on the fact, they have to usually dumb it down for them. Yeah. Well, they got to smart it up for me and dumb it down. You fit. It, come on. But that's Everybody what I'm trying smart. to say. Well, Jonathan, well, the IG centennials are new dumb. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know that's because they don't read. That's because y'all don't read. Y'all are right. right. But this is my question. I don't know what Sister Sandra is. Where I still don't know about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, I'll explain that to you. And then. guess what? I don't feel like you I don't need want to look it up. Right. <laughs> Wait, what's that? You want Sister Sandra. Hey, that's a drug thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, you know, <laughs> so they were talking about some stuff, and he says, you know, they'll ask you these different things, what and it sounds really simple, and it sounds like it's innocent, but some of these things are code for very, very sexually explicit activities or very, very explicit or illicit drug usage. Oh, yeah, you can't even give out freaking gummy bears anymore. Because it's straight up. Yeah, it's straight up, like... Messed up Xanax 
answer. I'm like, damn, okay. So you let know, me not go it. anywhere. And so, yeah. oh, smash. But what the whole saying? point is we can't, and I'm going to say this to you just because, like, if really you do cringe and you don't want to think of your kids as having information being given to them because you're not giving it. And that's the point. You're not giving it. So when it happens and you find out, hey, mom, we just want you to be in a position where your, your 9-year-old, your 12-year-old can say, mom, this kid showed me this at school. What is this? And we not freak out. Right. I want to have that conversation. Have it. My daughter just shuts me down. So she shut me down. I had an yeah, incident at school this year uh -oh. where they were offering the class. I told my daughter, I signed a form. I turned it, I, you know, I gave it to her to turn in. I found it in her book bag, bought up. I went to, I, Wait, what was in her book bag? Uh, a form to take the class. class. She didn't want to take the class? She said she's already taken it in fifth grade. She don't even know. Okay. And she knows, you know, about it. So, so I know she's aware of this. Yes. Okay. And in Texas, they preach abstinence. They don't go That's over, the problem. They That's don't go book over, books. you know, options to for safe. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just straight up. We, they're based on not doing that at all. Yeah, but the just the number one thing is I went to the class for the parents to educate us. So I think that part is important to educate us. What should teach you? What kids. we should teach our kids as well. Yeah, they told us what they're teaching the kids. Well, no, I don't. I already know what I should teach my kid. I want to know what you're teaching my kid. Well, yeah, both. <laughs> I already know but what just, I need to But tell. even going deeper into you know diseases and other mm -hmm. things, but. Because um, new stuff be coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's coming out like movies now. <laughs> you take me, man. That's <laughs> well, true. I, but they said the number one read, the number one prevention that the kids look for is for the parents to talk to them. So of that course. education from the parents is most important because that's going to be the first line of defense of preventing them from going into. Yeah. And that's so the this is where my question is. I understand where it came from for me, so let me take myself out of the situation. But where is this uncomfortability coming from? I know where it came from for me. My father just messed up, like, really bad. But for all these other people, for parents and kids, like, why can't y'all talk? <laughs> I'm confused about that. Well, it's not it's that. It's for our, like... Like, like your mom said, the our generation is it's it's the, the parents. Have the problem. It's the parents before us. I didn't get the conversation, or I did. It's probably uncomfortable. Maybe there, you know, it's like it 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 follows a cycle. So that's why so when you break the cycle, cycle. Right. then going forward, it's something easier to do. But even coming from the south or different places, a lot of things were taboo to talk about. But now your generation, millennials and different generations, they're not going to sit quiet. They're not just going to accept, oh, this is okay. Let's just go with the flow. Yeah. No. no we We're going to talk it. about it. We're going to have a conversation. So you guys are actually the icebreakers. See, but here's the thing. Here's the difference between the millennials and the iGen centennials. And we talked about this before. Jonathan's millennial group, 24, 25, 20, up to 28-ish up in there, those guys, the millennials, there was a lot of information, a push of information that was made available to them in a more intellectual and intelligent way. Which is why but I've I, always said, go get some knowledge. Right, but the right. iGen Centennials, it's not being distributed that way. You turn on the TV, it's there. Oh, yeah. You turn on your computer, it's there. Yeah. So it's they're not even having the opportunity to get a conversation. Yeah. It's just there, and they're exposed to all this stuff and it's really inundated with it, and they don't know what they're being inundated with. Subliminal. You're at the point where you're just like, curious. Yeah, you're at the point where you're just like, I know. Right. <laughs> so, but that's okay. why it was I such know. a huge problem for me, and a huge push and an issue for me to really start talking to Yakira, really about how we're going to deal with y uh, Skylar. Because I have a five-year-old granddaughter, and her mom is here, you know? Her mom is going to be going to college. I still have the five-year-old, you know? And Jonathan, like I said, he, he expressed that, yeah, we had the information, but it wasn't such a big deal. If we wanted to know about something, we'll just go and get more information. Right, right. But these kids, and, our, and your nine-year-old and the five-year-old, they're not getting a conversation. They're going to get on a computer, and you're going to have sex right there. 
and it's gonna be not your fault because you're not. It's not like you're trying to prepare them and put in a pornographic site you know, for them to open up. Button. But what I was talking about was when you had the music files. That was the first thing that I understood how it was snuck into material that's supposed to be innocent. There were music files. I think one of them is the famous one was Britney Spears. It had a Britney Spears and it's supposed to be her music. You open it up and it is pornographic movies. And, and as soon as you click it, it's playing. And then I guess it inserts cookies, you know, into your computer. So now you're getting these things, post-ups and pop-ups, being sent to you and you're flooded with it. All because you opened up a music file. So this is what I'm trying to say. Our age group, our, you know, we're not thinking on that level. You know, we're thinking, well, I'm controlling this. I'm controlling what my kids have access to. Technology no, you're not. I'm trying to help us all understand. We are not the only ones who are dictating what our kids get exposed to once they leave our house. Or while they're in the house. And while they in the house. Technology and That's sometimes true. bad people yeah, or because just misinformed people. Well, the computer I was on was actually in the house, mm -hmm. so you're right. And it was a music file. Right. Or I thought it was a music file. Well, now they do it differently. Now you like go on to like so what I've been encountering is like I'll go on Instagram and it's like they have this stream of just a bunch of different stuff and so like I'll click on a video and be like, oh, it's like something funny for a second and they just pop up, help me, help me. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, okay, keep so they're, scrolling. They're, they're sliding it into these other well, things. Well, too, I would say like my daughter watches YouTube and she falls asleep and there's a continuous slew of videos playing and she happens to wake up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if you're watching cable, HBO, Cinemax, or whatever at night, you fall asleep and you, you wake, wake up, up and it's like, what, what well, is now, going on? Like, those things, though, you can do parental, parental controls. controls. So, no, like, I'm seeing like my kids sleep in the bed. They have their room. Mm -hmm. And when I wake up, they're in our room. So let's say we're watching the movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, they come into your room. Yeah, because ah. they don't have cable in the kids' room. They don't have okay. cable. Oh. But if we so they get in the freaky deaky from mommy and daddy's room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if we wake up, I'm not even saying they wake up, but I've had But you noise. wake up and it's like, I wake this? up and I hear noises. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. It's the TV. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that no more. Turn we watch the TVs off before you go to sleep, people. Now, or watch the Weather Channel. That's what we watch now. <laughs> ESPN, 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. Or just Disney, Disney Channel, because Disney Channel never does that. <laughs> Nickelodeon. Yeah, there's Nick so oh, no, Nick at Night changes. Nick at Night changes. Disney XD never changes. Hey, Steel. They trash. Hey, Digga. I don't care if they're trash. Hey, My child know? isn't all of a sudden going to be exposed to something that she don't need to be exposed to if I leave her on But even if you watch some If you watch what? So far, brother. It's a commercial. That was my whole point. Commercial. Okay, so in Spain, okay, when I studied in Spain, and this is in the 90s, but this is in the 90s. So in the 90s, the commercials, they're, you, you're nude or topless. You know, you can have that in their commercials. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly natural. Even the, the newscast with people. So here's the thing. I guess the problem is we are the ones who are bent out of shape about sexuality. Everybody else, nobody else, they don't have an issue. Not they country. don't have the issue. So as soon as, again, as soon as we get over ourselves and get over it, we can now better prepare our kids. And if, if Yakira had asked me, Mom, this kid, if she had told me, this kid told me about sex, what is sex? I would have to, first of all, get an understanding of what her frame of reference is. Like, what do you mean? What did, what did you hear? What do you know? And what are you really asking me? Okay? Because I do believe that you have to speak appropriately well, to address what they're asking you. See, okay, this is the new mom. Because back then, if I asked you something that, you know, you weren't really prepared to talk about, you're like, you don't have any business knowing about that. Like, you would shut it down, too. So there were times, like, you would shut it down. I don't remember you ever even, us even having a conversation about sex. And we didn't talk, and I'm not talking about sex, there were other things, like, you, you, mom didn't want me watching a movie because she understood that, like, it was ridiculous, like a dog jerked off in the damn movie. I, okay, no. I, <laughs> she didn't 
didn't want to see in that movie. I don't know what that was called, but it was hilarious. It's, so certain things have parental guidance and are rated R for a reason. To me, they were making fun, and it was a fun, but that it was disgusting. It was it was ridiculous. No, it was disgusting. You know, this dog is jerking off, like for real. You know, and um, people think that's that's humorous. I just didn't think that was funny. And then it was because he was high, though. <laughs> So that means but then work. I didn't, she's this is getting even better, right? But I just didn't feel like, you know, it, it doesn't have anything to do with you and your development on any level. You know, it was just ridiculousness. And somebody believed that was something that was funny. But I didn't feel that it was funny. I thought and it was I, funny for adults. For right, for adults. I didn't feel it was funny, and I definitely didn't want my daughter being exposed to it because if they're showing the dog masturbating, what else are they showing in this movie? I don't and remember that, them showing much worse than that. <laughs> they really, I mean, there was a lot of sexual innuendo, but I don't yeah, even remember the name of this movie. It was about the guy trying to get back to his wife. It had, uh, it had Robert Downey Jr. and uh, the fat dude from Hangover. Zach Yeah, Zach yeah. Galifianakis. Galifianakis. You're the only one who would say that name. I know. So, <laughs> so, so then you're asking, well, do do can dogs masturbate? Is that what's happening when they're humping your leg? And, you know, now we got to Well, get actually, there's a study shows that uh, humans and uh, dolphins, so dolphins, orcas, stuff like that, they're the only creatures that have sex for pleasure. So, your dog is not masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you know. <laughs> so wait, orcas and dolphins have sex for pleasure? Yeah, they're the only animals that have sex for pleasure. How do they know that they're doing it for pleasure? I guess. It's well, I know that they're mammals, animals, but well, how do they know it's in that? A, it's a brain thing. Remember, they made a whole song on it. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. They just, just a mammal. Well, I but guess. a dog is a mammal, so if that's the case, then they should be able to have sex for pleasure. So that's but how do they reason. know that the whale? It's a brain a, thing. So I don't know. What does our brain look like when we're turned on? I don't know the science. Then <laughs> go look at a turned on psychologist. <laughs> Somebody look it up. Because <laughs> I don't know. You're a marine like. biologist. Yeah, but I didn't things. look that. I'm not going deep into detail. All I know is orcas and dolphins and in that family, that family of animals, they are the only other animals other than humans that have sex for pleasure. Wow. I didn't dig into that. I was like, okay, let me research this one. <laughs> That's, I never knew that. See, so she just has educated me right there. Did you know that, John? Yeah, there was a time where she didn't know that a killer whale wasn't a whale either. That part was just really like, really? You haven't seen Free Willy? Like, come on now. I have seen Free Willy. And you but didn't they know didn't he wasn't a whale. They didn't make it known that Free Willy was a dolphin in there. It yeah. was. Uh, the kid, Jesse, calls them orcas. And they go into the whole backstory of what an orca is. Oh. And they have a whole behind the scenes I in the really movie. That. And that was a VHS tape. I didn't really watch Free Willy. I was a Free Willy fan, okay? Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was my stuff. I did All not know up. that orcas were dolphins. Yeah. We're the largest dolphin. The only reason they call them killer whales is because they're because big they enough to kill, kill a whale. Because they actually kill whales. No, yeah. they actually kill whales. I was going to say, they're big enough Yeah, they're, they're the wolves of the sea. So they, they, they go into packs and then they like drown the babies. Yeah, so, so sad. Take them out. So sad. Because, I mean, whales need to breathe air just like we do. So, yeah. That's pretty smart, though. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. that's a big... That's a feast right there. When all you got around you is a bunch of little stuff and you see something big, it's like, all right, well, yeah. I got six of my buddies right here. <laughs> so let's get some feasting on. Get my grubbins. I mean, I don't like the way how, like, I don't like the way nature works sometimes, but if you really look at the way, like, she's like, dang, that's just crazy. That's what it is. All right, next one. <laughs> LGBTQI freaking A and P. I got um, word that I left out the P, y'all. Look. <laughs> Wait, so is T for transsexual? Because if that's the case, then we're missing out on some other stuff. <laughs> Look, yes, just, okay. just, let's just delegate the whole bag on Then we should have H and some other things. <laughs> Look, I made the comment, and I understand, and I will say this. For those of pe the people who are close to me, who know who I am, they are aware and they know that I personally was not trying to be um, harmful. I was not trying to be 
hurtful. I was not calling anybody out. But what one of my dear brothers made me aware of is he said, well, it seemed like by you opening that discussion that way, you allowed there to be room for people who are hateful and hurtful to get up and say things that were mean and hurtful and hateful. Yeah. And, and I, I, I understand that. I accept responsibility for anything that I personally have done, but you don't need me to say anything for people to be hurtful and hateful. Yeah, people are hateful just You know, um, but I think that person felt a little bit uh, disappointed because it was on my page. And my page is the per I'm the one who's all inclusive. I'm the one who does not try to judge anybody. I'm the one trying to create a safe place for people um, especially people like myself, you know, who have been, who's, who experienced judgment and all this other stuff. Yeah. And so um, I totally understood that. I, I totally appreciated him for saying what he said, and he said it in love, you know, that I didn't expect something that I would come to your page and read would have all this and would provoke certain feelings that I have. And I get that. I am an ally. But I'm also part of the community. <laughs> this is what people don't understand. And this one chick, it was actually one of our sorors, um, from who's, who's lesbian, who made the comment that, um, well, people in the community can be bigoted against the community, too. I am not a bigot, period. I don't have to defend myself one way or the other, as far as that, cause that's concerned. Because how you see me and what you think about me is really none of my business. Yeah. But for people who are important to me. It's important for me that they understand my frame of reference so that they're not confused. Not because I'm ashamed or I'm taking back or I'm apologizing for being myself. Not at all. I just want to make sure they're clear because they are important to me, okay? Now, LGBTQIA P H H so I, I don't think, but I don't think the community recognizes the H. I don't know. Well, but that's disrespectful and that's bigotry too, because there are hermaphrodites out there. Oh, hermaphrodites. Technically. I think that's I trans. The, that's, that's, the inter, that's the intersexual. Inter, intersexual. Uh, I don't think so. I think it is. No, I think it is. I think <laughs> unless they decided to call themselves that can have the part who can have both of the genitals. Um, that doesn't make sense. Well, no, hermaphrodite is born with both male oh, and female saying, gender, uh, some genital that say that they don't really consider it Relating to or having the condition of, of being be intermediate between male and female. See, is that what is the inter? Did you do I've the intersexual? Heard that before. Yeah. It says, okay, okay, these are all the way, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it says existing or current occurring between the sexes, relating to or having the condition of being intermediate between male and female. Right, so you have all the way, all the way, we're not done, we're not done. That's the interse intersexual. That's an intersexual. Right. So hermaphroditism. That's an actual medical condition. Yeah. In, bio in biology, a hermaphrodite is an organism that has a, uh, has reproductive organisms. Uh, reproductive male and female organs. Hermaphrodite. That's it. Define. A person or animal having both male and female sex organs or other sexual characteristics, either abnormally or as the natural condition. So, yeah. intersexual, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. The way that it's defined is kind of confusing me because I, I don't. The intersexual covers the age. As far That's as what they're trying about. to say as far as the community goes. It's the same thing. But from what it sounded like for intersexual, they're choosing what they want to be, which to it me says that's like either strange. that or it's their, na their natural condition of their, their body. Like they were it's between the way. two. They have both. There's two. Some of them were just born that way. They got a little bit older. It's like we're having the condition of inter or of being intermediate. What does that mean? Having both. That doesn't make sense to me. Then why do they have? Why do they have an intersexual or and or hermaphrodite? Why is the why is there two different? Well, for the P, let me explain the P too. The P is pan or poly. Okay. Now I've already told you guys. People think I'm joking when I say I'm polyamorous. <laughs> I am not joking. I am, Super J is polyamorous, okay? Which puts me in the community, all right? But I am more than that, and that was my whole point. 
I don't care if people know I'm poly or not. I say it and it's funny to a lot of people because they know me and they're like, you really are. But, <laughs> you know, but other people would get confused by that. The pan was the piece that was challenging me because pan includes zoophilia, just like Jonathan said. I studied it, I researched it. Pansexuals, for some people it just means all and everything. So next time some teenager who's my age comes up to me and says I'm pansexual, tell I'm straight them. up, be, no, I'm not going to tell them nothing. I'm going to ask them, so you're fine with having sex with a goat. And if they say no, I'm like, you're not pansexual and get out of my face with that bullshit. <laughs> well, the point is, is pan, pan, pan has, pan in many respects includes Zoophilia, people. Like I said, I had a conversation. Uh, no, what I'm first is, ago. what is pansexual? I'm gonna act like I don't know what it is. They is they they're have gonna be like, I, I love all things. Everything. And as soon as they say that, I'm like, so you love, you're, you're fine with loving Including animals. animals. I'm like, so you're okay with having sexual relations with animals. So <laughs> some people think it's just a cool flash word that I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm universal in my love. It doesn't matter. That's not what pan really means, y'all. <laughs> so be careful if you're not trying to say that you want someone to think potentially that you participate in zoophilia. I probably would choose a different letter <laughs> or a different representation. I probably I would go with polyamory. <laughs> I would say I was polyamorous too. I would not say now polyamorous has a lot of different uh, levels as well. Um, some people think when you talk about being polyamorous, we're only speaking sexual interaction no, and sexual relationships. Sexual. But people, that is that is such the lowest level I of actually, what polyamory is. It's funny, I'm following like four different people who are uh, famous-ish. Uh, there's this girl who was on Bad Girls Club. She's a uh, lesbian and she's in a lesbian relationship with two girlfriends. And then she also has her own other girlfriend. So she technically has three different girlfriends. But the two girlfriends aren't with the girlfriend that she has on her own. So it's really kind of confusing. But they all love each other. Like, they're all really cool with each other. There's not one person who's jealous of the other or anything like that. It's not that kind of thing. And I think the way you have that kind of relationship is there's an understanding of we're all each other's. You know, there's no your mind kind of thing like possession. Doesn't yeah, mean. like they don't have that there's like possessive nature. Well, here's the thing, though. Here, it, and in my opinion, it's even different than that because see, here you have lesbians. So, do you want to be acknowledged as lesbians, or do you want to be acknowledged as polyamorous? Well, they call how themselves... about you just acknowledge me as Jill? Well, they call <laughs> themselves polyamorous lesbians. So now you okay? They're polyamorous. Lesbians. The point is, I understand that there is a spectrum, and it seems like everybody in the world wants to be identified as something in this spectrum. I could care less personally. It has nothing to do with taking away from a person or, or trying to minimize them as individuals or whatever. I'm in the community. What I'm saying is, that's not everything about me. So why, I'm not gonna put polyamorous Jill Marie Lund. I'm, that's, why would, I, why would I do that? I'm not putting that up there at all because it's not what defines me. It's not what, look, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna just say this, okay? Let's get back into this. As soon as I walk in the door, you're going to know my skin is not white, that I have melanated skin. You're going to see that before I say anything. So regardless of what I decide to call myself and what other category or box I put myself in, the first thing you're already going to put me in is whatever box you believe that a melanated person should be in. That's the first thing. That's going to be my identification for you. Period. Now, for those who don't do that kind of designation, then you're going to see me as Jill. My name, Super J, for those of you who only know that side, okay? At the end of the day, nobody is asking me about my sexuality 
or about my intimate relationships with other people. When I go on a job interview, <laughs> that's not coming up. It's not allowed to. Now, do not think that I am naive and that I don't recognize that certain people in the community, that can be seen too. But that's a stereotype, all right? Those are stereotypes. You can't say because there's a female who seems to participate in more masculine, in the box, masculine activities than um, others, that that person is a lesbian. You can't designate people by that. You absolutely wouldn't be able to tell what I am unless I tell you. The only thing you can see is that I am melanated. So if you have a problem with melanated people, you're going to have a problem with me. If you don't have a problem with melanated people, you're not going to have a problem with me. But it's going to be independent of what I do sexually or intimately with my peers or my friends or those people that I'm intimate with. You're not going to care about that. And so all I was saying was that everybody wants all these distinctions, and I respect that. But if I, if I forget one or if I don't acknowledge one, don't be mad. You know, because at the end of the day, that's not what I see for you. That's not what I see for myself. I see my individual character. I see Jonathan's character. I see Annette's character. I see Yakira's character. But see, that's the problem, though. They don't... They're so focused on... You can't say all of them. You not all of them. Not all of them. You gotta see... In your experience, you gotta... Not, okay, let me make a public service announcement for everything that I say. When I am talking about people, I'm not talking about everybody on this damn planet. So please, if I say people, don't, if it doesn't, if the shoe fits, exactly, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't, don't. Okay? But we know about that. Here's my thing. When you're speaking for a population, though, that you're not part of, you can't. You have to say, in my experience with this particular group, that's the only filter you have. You can't speak for how they think or how they feel because we don't know. Just like we were talking with the Colin Kaepernick issue. People I'm can't saying speak about how I feel because they don't know. All right, well, like I'm saying, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't wear it. But anyway, what I was going to say is, like, I feel like people are so caught up in, because as soon as I meet you, like, why are you telling me, oh, yeah, I'm a lesbian? Or, you know, like, why is that my business, first of all? Can't, can't I just know your name? You know, like, people are just very focused on, you know, labels, and I feel like this is the reason. This is the theory. This is the conspiracy that I've come up with. <laughs> so let's go back, all the way back to like the 1400s, where like you couldn't even have sex unless you got married, people sleeping in different beds kind of thing, right? So sex was just like a, a thing. Like, and then once sex came out, like well, we're like, oh my God, sex, what? No. So then sex became acceptable, and everybody's like, it's a natural thing. No one cares about that. Then you got, you know, lesbians and gays. What? No, that's not okay. We have to hate you. Then lesbians and gays came out, and they're like, okay, whatever. You know, we're not going to care about what you do in your bedroom. That became acceptable. Once things become acceptable, you have to have something different. So you, it's like people have to be hated almost. Like, this is the thing that I've come up with. Because it's like once you come up with something that isn't acceptable, that no one's heard of, people have a tendency to not like what they don't understand, what they haven't heard before. So as soon as you're like, I'm pansexual, we're like, nope, no you're not, we don't like that, no, I don't like that word, you're just bisexual, you're lesbian, you're whatever. So it's like, why do you need to come up with something new, first of all, because there's only two genders in the world. <laughs> like, honestly, if we're really honest with each other, there's only a penis and a vagina, or both, so a hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite so three genders if you want to call it that. But honestly, there's only two reproductive systems. So... Unless you're trying to get with other organisms that are not human, <laughs> then you can call yourself something else. Otherwise, you really don't need to be coming up with these different labels because it's unnecessary and it's just another way. Some people think it's repetitive or redundant. It's repetitive and redundant, first of all. And also, it's just another way for people. It's, it, you guys want to be distinguished. But you're just giving us a reason to, like, you're just giving people a reason to hate you. Like, honestly, there, were, there was a time where you were killed for being gay. That became unacceptable. Now people aren't getting killed for being gay. So you guys have to well, come up with something on the country. Well, yeah, it depends on the country. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about America. 
Um, but it's just like, why are you coming up with something new just so you can... And when you guys get rejected, my question is, why did you come up with something new in the first place so you could get rejected? You know it's not okay. Like, I'm not saying it's not okay, but you know, like, someone's not going to understand it based off of human nature. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, it just doesn't make sense to me how y'all can get mad at other people who don't understand that lifestyle and want to just reject that as a whole. Like, I get... Y'all want people to be open-minded. So, so if you have the LGBT, you Just feel that that it. really covers the span of pretty much everybody. It does. And like, then when you get into the Q, well, what is what is queer? Okay, that is very that is a very interesting term for me. The, di in that the dictionary s states that peculiar. it's unusual, yeah. unusual or peculiar. That has nothing to do with your sexuality. Unless you into some really big stuff. I'm into worms. <laughs> so no, but I'm very serious. Wait, maybe that co maybe that covers the fetish life. Maybe that's what that covers. Okay. They just call those kinks. Kinks? That's what fetishes and kinks. That's what they call them. So where what is it queer? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Queer doesn't have to do with that. They call them kinks. So. What? So that's a K? No, it's not a letter. It's, that's not yes, a letter. It's not in a letter the, at all. The, it's just the, what they do. In the rainbow, it is not a letter. <laughs> okay, so those, so so people with fetishes are kinks. But what well, no, is queer? They have or they kinks. have kinks. I'm sorry, they have kinks. What is queer? I'm asking anybody who claims that they are queer. What is queer? Back then, it used to mean gay. So I really think that letter well, no, should be taken it out. It didn't even mean gay. That's the thing, people would call people this name, they labeled them with a name, but it's not anything that's actually real. Well, to them, real. they should have probably thought, well, you're gay, so that's peculiar to me. So you're queer. So, so you're, you're queer. queer. Exactly. Okay, but if you're gay, you're gay. Yeah, nowadays, back then, that's probably why they but used that, But now is where you got the cue. So now you have to, so if y'all are going queer. So the thing is, if y'all are going to keep evolving the, the rainbow letters, then you guys need to evolve and take some out because Q doesn't make sense to us at this point. Unless you're quadrosexual, whatever that may mean, or cupasexual. <laughs> I'm just coming up with things at this point. But no, I'm, I'm oh, very serious when I ask what is queer because Q. that, you know, LGBT... Q was where it was, and it stopped there for a long time. But what is Q? Queer eye for the straight guy. For a long time, it was LGBTQA, and A stands for allies, and that changed to asexual. asexual. Right. So I was like, how are you asexual? But we're not going to get back into that because oh, we yeah, already that talked about really that. That one's really interesting, actually. I've seen. But, but <laughs> my, I, I, and I'm not being funny about it. I think that is a very redundant word. And I think it was a, it was a derogatory slur. To call somebody queer yeah, that is like calling nice. somebody a nigger. Yeah, it wasn't it, nice. It, it, it was a derogatory term. Let's look it up. Let's see if queer is actually the, the Q in LGBTQ. It is. You sure? <laughs> it, it, is. Is. it is. Yes, it is. That's for sure. So my thing is, is that What like, does the Q mean is in being, LGBTQ? Is, call, is calling yourself queer like you accepting the N-word if you're black. Calling yourself a nigger. Is that what queer is now? Like, nigga for gay? It's other than normal. But the, but they are, they're gay. <laughs> what does or Q can stand for? Q can stand, can mean either questioning or queer. Okay, so now it's questioning. <laughs> what the, what the, <laughs> okay, but, that, but that makes more sense. That no, that sense. makes more so sense. Questioning queer. like you're not sure what you are? Yes. Like, by like curious? Your quest, no, not well, by actually, curious. Actually, if you watch the last season of Digra uh, Degrassi, the last four seasons. That makes seasons, more sense. That actually, they actually had a girl that um, puts that category on the map. So map it's map. not queer, it's, it's questioning, y'all tell me. They more Question. think about it because what happened with this particular girl, she didn't see herself as a boy or a girl, she just saw herself as herself. Mm -hmm. And so she would dress in this kind of neutral <laughs> sexual kind of way. So now we call that gender fluid. So yeah. she was androgynous? And exactly. But for but androgynous her, isn't necessarily like, questioning. No, but she was questioning herself. Okay. Like, well, what am I? Okay, so wait a second. So now we go deeper. It says queer means many things. People use the term queer because it's not specific to sexual orientation or to gender identity, but is more of an umbrella term that can encompass a lot of people according to SANS. 
queer is anything that exists outside of the <clears throat> dominant narrative. So if everyone says gay, lesbian, or bisexual, then and transgender, that's the dominant narrative. Well, so no, it queer says, is it outside says of queer, that. It says queer means that you're one of those letters. So it means so you're it's redundant. So that means that Q is unnecessary. That's like what I'm trying to say. It's <laughs> redundant. But it used to stand for something derogatory. If mm -hmm. you were called a queer, you were called you were that was a slur. Yeah, that's now, why I even got that the game and on the I'll questioning the queer. smear the queer. On the questioning. I used to hate that game after a while once I figured out what queer meant, because I didn't know what that used to mean as a kid. That was you just a play that game, game and you're like, okay, well everybody hits me. Like that was that's just what you thought. But then when I got a little bit older, probably like twelve, and I figured out what that word actually meant, I didn't really like playing that game no more. I'm like, can we just play football then? Because I don't like really having to call it that. It's just football. Yeah. You know? Um, on the questioning, it says, um, those who use the Q to mean questioning refer to people who are in the process of exploring their identity. Um, questioning means pe someone who is figuring out their gender identity and figuring out how they want to identify their the sexual the orientation. Um, now, that makes more sense. But that's basically like bi curious. Not necessarily. But no, it doesn't. Bi curious means. You're asking, do I like both of these? Am I attracted to both of these? You're not sure. The other person that person is saying, they don't they know what, what's going on. They're questioning. Everything. They're so I get that, okay. Gender. So we're but just going to say queer doesn't exist. Here's my problem. LGBTQ. Here's my problem. As you guys see us going through this, we're stumbling here. You just like that kid. We're stumbling through this from a generally heteros heterosexual perspective. And that's where my point was about the myths. If I'm coming from a heterosexual frame of reference and no one in the community, LGBT, Q, I, A, or P, want to educate me and help me to understand, because not what, nobody has answered the question, mm -hmm. and I know I've got some people in the community on the stream, but then if I get it wrong, you're pissed off. That's what I was saying about my, my little post this week. And I'm like, you got all these fair. letters. And if I don't understand them and I've asked the question and and then you get upset because I asked the question. Some people get mad because, well, why are you just trying to, you know, you're being derogative. That's you actually being a bigot. No, that's not me being a bigot. That's me asking the freaking question. Yeah. Because in a heterosexual frame of reference, I can't see you. I can't, I don't have your filter. Yeah. I can't understand the way you see it. I don't have that filter. Now, I'm heterosexual, but I'm polyamorous. So isn't that a, isn't that a <laughs> try to figure that one out. <laughs> try to figure it out. But the point is, I was raised with a heterosexual mindset, is what I'm trying to say. Okay? So if that's the only frame of reference that I have, and that's all I know, and that's all I personally have experienced, if I'm coming to someone in the community, or if I'm throwing out a general question, why won't you answer without the venom and the anger and the resentment that I don't know? See, I feel like that's why some people don't take it seriously. I feel like the older people in the community feel that way because they've encountered, you know, a lot of resistance. The younger ones, like. My friend who's bisexual, she's chill. Like she, I can ask her all the questions I want to ask her, and she will have no problems with it. And some of the other people that I've met, except for one who was pansexual, and I was like, that makes no sense. But I mean, I didn't. Say I mean, that it was funny. Okay, so, but here's the thing: when I wrote the when I wrote the comment, I was I was being comedic. It really was comedic, but it was also serious. It was true. I'm like, can anybody explain this to me? Like, why are there all these distinctions? Mm -hmm. Why can't I just call you by your name? Why yeah. can't I just judge you by your character? Why is it so important to have this? And instead of someone saying, well, you know what? This is why it's important. The person who responded was salty. Y'all go read it. It's this long. I left it right there, too, because she said she's entitled to her opinion. But when I but when I went and, and did a little research, I said, okay, she's in this community as a lesbian. She's a black lesbian. All right, so now there's a couple double whammies there. I understand that. All right? I understand just being the black part. Okay? 
first and foremost. Now I get that there's this other level of oppression that you're experiencing because you're a lesbian. Okay, but guess what? Nobody knows you're a lesbian until you tell them, boo-boo, or until you're walking with your wife or your partner. Nobody knows. Yeah, and but even then, you can you don't necessarily have to show that. That's true, because I walk, I walk hand in hand with my daughter. I walk hand in hand, you know, I hug on my sore. I Look, that doesn't mean anything as far as my sexuality or who, who I choose to, you know, engage intimately with. So the point was, it really wasn't that serious. It wasn't that deep. It really was not that deep. And if it is that deep, then you should speak up to try to Educate. Educate without so much venom, venom yeah. and anger, because the majority of people laughed at you know because it was comedic. It was funny. You want to take the whole bag on alphabet? You already got. Look, you did claim the rainbow, by the way, and I was quite offended <laughs> when I was like, "Wait a minute, the rainbow?" Because I didn't. I, this is a long time ago. I didn't know that the rainbow was a symbol that uh, uh, was representing the wide spectrum of all of the multiplicity of individuals in the community. And so that's what they that's what was being used. I didn't know that. And what then you go, at and one point though the rainbow I took my skills. At yeah. one point though the rainbow like represented race the, though. But the so, rainbow represents the promises of God as far as I'm concerned. So it didn't have anything to do with sexuality. It didn't even have anything to do with the community. It didn't have anything to do with an array of, uh, or a spectrum. It was either colors that come through, you know, that are refracted by light, or it was the promises of God. That was the only association that I had with rainbows, except that you have babies, and we always put rainbows around the babies. But guess what? I put rainbows around the babies because the rainbows were representing the promises of God for me, okay? So, I'm when, just take neon colors. when, when, <laughs> when I, I made the comment like that, I, you claimed the rainbow, and that was because I said, you can't walk around wearing anything in a rainbow. You can't have a rainbow on your car. You can't have a rainbow t-shirt without the first understanding or the first assumption is that you are either part of the community or you are an ally of the community. Either way. But what if you're neither of those? You're just wearing a freaking rainbow. And so I said, I can't be, I can't wear a rainbow t-shirt without being classified. Why are you mad about that? That was the truth. And then another gentleman came on talking about his wife who's a Zumba instructor, had on a rainbow colored shirt, she's on a cruise, she's a Zumba instructor, she had on a rainbow colored shirt, and the first thing they asked her was, was she part of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, was she LGBT, Q, I, or A? Because she like, had on the rainbow. That's like asking somebody who's wearing a Bob Marley shirt if they smoke. Well, I think it's a little different. No, you know, really because you might like Bob Marley's music. You might, but the thing is, Bob Marley was also very known for his activism for marijuana, though. But the, thing <laughs> is, the difference here is the general population has not decided and identified that as a symbol of that group. My you can, generation You has. can wear Bob Marley and people think you like his music. My generation Yeah, but also your way. generation looks on her generation now. So y'all wait, wait, what do you want to obviously our generation and her generation made it a popular thing and what happens is we took that and was like, oh, marijuana is good and we used Bob Marley as the spokesperson, which was Okay, see but in my in, But in, that's what I'm saying. From it's my frame of reference, I wouldn't say that. But people from your frame of reference look upon them like, oh, well, that's all you're using it for. I don't. If I see somebody that's wearing a Bob Marley you, that you're using it because you're promoting drugs or marijuana use. My thing is, if I see someone with a Bob Marley t-shirt, I'm like, wow, and they're young, I'm like, wow, you, you know, you really have You're giving a, them the benefit of the doubt. a great taste in <laughs> That's what music. I think, because I love Bob Marley. See, the, matter see? of fact, I have a kid named Marley. Right, <laughs> so, so, so we're not thinking that. Yeah. But if My you, generation is like, you smoking that ganja. <laughs> but if you hold up a rainbow, it is universal that people, that's the first conclusion they come to. And that's all I was saying. And that was even funny to me. 
that I'm like, okay, so now I, got, I can't wear the daggone rainbow. I will wear whatever the freak I want to wear. I was making a point, and it was funny, but she got mad about that. Of course we didn't claim the rainbow. I'm like, yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's you did. Symbol. It's a symbol. It's a for symbol sure. that you use to represent this wonderful community yeah. that actually all of us are in. Because if you put the H in there, Yakira, it just means human. How about that? That's the one letter we should definitely put out. You know, and also, why human. is it? H can also mean heterosexual. So it's it just can be like, all, we're all. That's my point. So it's we're just human. like you're just. You're human. But the thing is, that whole community has to do with sexuality. So heterosexuality is a sexuality as well. So why you guys are like saying but it's not, we don't it's matter. Not only sexuality. I mean, um, transgender is not necessarily okay. Y'all, I just need somebody who is transgender to explain it. Because yeah. I can't speak for you. We and need be somebody right. who's gender fluid, we need a lesbian, we need somebody who's gay, we and need somebody who's bisexual. Where's B. Scott? Yeah, we need like a bunch of Where's B. Scott? Where you, where's B. Scott when you need him? We need the panel. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, you know, I, I'm sorry that I'm not sorry that I don't care about all the different titles. I care about you as the individual. Why am I wrong? Why can't I just love you? You let me love you. Oh, wait, you know, someone, why can't I just love someone you? Someone said something. I can't see it right now. I'm like, grace, peace, and mercy to the family, I'm guessing. Who was saying that? Luther G. Williams. Hey, Luther. How's it going? We're just talking about trying to share the love. And honestly, people, that really is my goal. We have been on here too long now. We gotta get to wrapping this up. I knew uh, Yulani was on here. Before we do that, hold on. Yulani was on here. Hey, Mom. Digga was on here. Um, Digga! And then the Real Luther fake G. media. Yeah. Luther G said the visual that. voice. Hey, Digga, do you remember my special, Annette? Digga Dane. Digga Dane! What's up? Digga Dane Lee is in the hizzy. This oh, is yeah. Annette from Ohio State, Digga. Hey, we're friends. Huh? Real friends on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's a digger. Look under Real Fake Media now. Uh, he is the visual voice. He has a media company, uh, amongst other things. He's making music again. Digger right. is back. All right. Blessings, Digga. brother. Blessings. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to love everybody equally, and we're not trying to offend anybody. Doug Rose said, "What's up, y'all? I'll be hey, you made it. Everything. I'll be your everything." Will you, Doug Rose? <laughs> I need somebody to be my everything about right now. <laughs> I need a little everything and more because I'm greedy. <laughs> about that. But the whole point of this discussion, though, is just like people get mad over a lot of stuff that, like, we get that it's important, but. Why don't we, instead of getting mad at each other, why don't we come together to solve the problem that we're not the problem. Yeah, exactly. We aren't the problem. So why don't we figure out a solution so we can solve the problem? Very good last word, Jakira. <laughs> you have, do you have a last word for being here? Thank you for being here. Thank First you for inviting me. It's yeah, what was your experience like? <laughs> very interesting. I didn't know what I was walking into. <laughs> Yeah, y'all know I, I had to be respectful of my special because as soon as I said anal, she bounced, oh, Lord, can I leave? So I, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit and just kept it mellow. Yeah, this was a lot oh, nicer and more conservative nice. today. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be here next week. Right. So. <laughs> so we back, back, to back to the <laughs> Wait, back to the, the sleaziness, right? No, I'm kidding. It's actually not sleazy. I don't think anything we talk about it's sleazy. It may be controversial, and that's what today was about. It's called controversy because just recently, I just wanted to address that I really am unapologetic, okay? I'm not sorry that I love people. I'm not sorry that I'm, I have a, a warped sense of humor as far as some people are concerned. I am accepting of me the way I am for who I am as I'm still growing, and I want to be able to accept you for who you are as you're growing too. And hopefully we can continue to grow together and just make the whole world. Doesn't this sound, somebody give me a violin. We're gonna make the whole world one big place that's special for everyone. Kumbaya, oh, 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 my Lord. moment. No, but I'm serious. I just, I, I love a lot of different 
people, you know, and I want to love some people who don't love me, but that can be difficult, okay? There are people who really don't love me, and I'm told that I'm supposed to um, bless my enemies even, but I want to be able to love some folk who don't love me, and I believe you don't love me because you haven't taken an opportunity to get to know me. And I'm not talking about know me as an individual, but just know me, the essence of who I am. Um, you were talking about spirits and souls meeting and, and, and you know having a conversation with any and everybody because there's going to be an exchange and an experience. You're going to get to know something. There's going to be a, a deposit one way or the other. That's what I need. That's what I want. That's what I love. I love the positive exchange. And even if it's negative, we can learn something from it. So that's really my take on all of it. Um, we'll get a little bit deeper into more sex stuff next week. Uh, I had to be respectful. I didn't want to make her uncomfortable because I also do that. She's my guest in our home, and so I'm not going to make her uncomfortable. But when she leaves next week, y'all, <laughs> she can watch from that side and be like, oh, Jill, oh, Lord, what the baby's talking about today. <laughs> I think it's great, but, you know, <laughs> it's great. We need it. We need the conversation. Thank you for coming. John, do you have any last words you want to say? Sergeant Rowe, are you supposed to be in the field somewhere and you just sneaking on? Because if you're sneaking on to see us, I'm so happy. Thank you. Smooches. Everybody, we love you. Have a good one.